Talking About Books presents episode three. We are here today again with Henson White. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. Good. And we will discuss his reading of Swing by Kwame Alexander with Mary Rand Hess. Tell me about the book. It is a poem and verse book, which means the whole book is made up of poems. Um, it is a very, it's a coming of age love story type of book uh, with the undertones of what the American flag represents in today's society. Okay, good. Who is your favorite character? My favorite character was Walt. Walt is has the nickname Swing, which is on the cover. And he is a very, I would say, interesting personality. He knows the dates of when famous people died. He knows, he listens only to, almost only to jazz music. And he is what most people would call a very, at least interesting person. Oh, okay. Um, how old is he? He's in his junior year of high school. Oh, okay. And is he um, African American or? I am pretty sure he is African American. Okay. So where does the book take place? It takes place in. Uh, I'm pretty sure they don't give a specific city. Um, I think it's just in a part of America. Uh, it gives you it, it it you can see it happening in almost every part of America, but it's in a it's in a suburb of a probably it feels like it's in a suburb of a bigger city. Oh, okay, kind of anywhere USA. Yeah. Okay, good. What would be your favorite part of the book? I know the book is a novel in verse. Could you talk about reading a book like that? It's interesting. It, if you look at the like page amount and look how thick the book is, and you would think, oh, it's going to take forever to read. But there are a couple of pages that are pictures drawn by the main character. Uh, and a lot of, some pages have like five words on them, and that's the entire page. Some chapters are like 10 words, and some chapters are like 100. It it it's really weird because if you, it's one of those you can't look at the book and just be like oh this will take a while. It I read it and and I I understand I read a bit faster than most people, but uh, I read it in about a day and a half. It there is you'll get to a point in the book where you'll have read like half of the book and you're like oh I didn't realize how far I was in to this novel. Oh, okay. Do you think that the author chose to write it in verse because it is a book about swing or the jazz or jazz music? I feel like that was part of the reason, uh, as well as the author already being well-versed in writing in this form. So that might've been a part, another reason. Would it appeal to teens? Yes. Uh, it's not. I mean, if you look, if you just purely look at page number, it's four. It's four hundred and forty-eight pages. And oh well, not really, because at the end it's like an outro kind of thing, so those don't really count. But it isn't it doesn't feel like a five a 400 page book it feels like a 200 page book that was uh a bit longer it's like when somebody double spaces an essay to make it look longer it's that kind of feeling 
Oh, okay. Would you say that the book mirrors a jazz album? I mean, I don't know your familiarity with jazz, but you know, there's, you know, you can have an introduction to a set, a set, this notion of an outro or the ending sequences of pieces of jazz music. Do you think that influenced or, or do you think that would help a student or maybe a not. I, f I feel that if you were well versed in jazz, there are a lot of references that I will admit flew over my head that I had to like, people I had to look up because I had no idea who they were. There's a lot of references to jazz and it's like, and if you don't, if you're not well versed in jazz, you're going to be sitting like, who is that person? I've, I've never heard of them. So you have to look them up. But could that be a good thing? Like an intentional uh, I feel that the author is well versed in jazz and are the authors and that he really it it does kind of feel like I mean if you take the idea that jazz has like an introduction there's the middle part or middle area of the set and then you have the conclusion of the set which is pretty much how most everything is written is the same way that a jazz piece would be performed. So yeah, there is a co that kind of correlation. Oh, okay. So do you feel that there's a continuation that's necessary or does the book like end? Cause you know, there's pieces of, um, you know, there's, I don't know, again, like I don't know your familiarity with jazz or if you've been to a jazz set, but sometimes there's a playing of stuff before the actual pieces come together and then the pieces come together and then you think it's over only to find that, you know, people continue to improvise and continue to play. Um, and that becomes part of it, but it's not, it was not intentionally necessarily the part. Like, is there any of that going on between the characters and the events of the book? Things that feel kind of, you know, improvised. Okay. Uh, improvised or unexpected um, no not really um that sounds like an interesting premise for a book though like a improvised kind of situation but there are no i'm trying to think back no okay, i didn't really... it's, it's okay if it's not there i was just trying to paint a picture for someone who's who you know if they're looking for something to read um especially a teenage male who's african-american who's looking at should i pick up this book um i'm not they may or may not be into music is that a prerequisite do i need to be into music to enjoy the book no i'm not into jazz music at all well i mean i listen to some jazz but not a lot of jazz like, I don't know the names of the people. I just, like, know the songs, like, by, yeah, that feeling of knowing a song kind of thing. But I'm not, oh, I know this artist's name. So it, I enjoyed the book, though, without that knowledge. So. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah, that's great. Because um, it sounds like you're you're kind of catching on to this notion of, you know, you you hear a song and so you feel the song and you know the song, but you don't remember the author. Um, you don't remember the musician nor the title of the piece, but it's still memorable. Is that kind of the impression you're left with? From yeah. Uh, yes. It's that kind of like, if you played the flight of the bumblebee and like in front of a crowd, people would know like, Oh, I've heard that song before. Or the flight of the Valkyrie or like so, all, all those like classical pieces. Like, no, they might not know who was by or who, what the name is, but they've heard it in media or, like, just randomly one day, and it was memorable to them. So that's the kind of feel that, you know, I, I personally have with most jazz music, and I feel like that most people would have with jazz music, because jazz isn't it's it's not like the biggest musical platform you can think of. We think, right. Okay. <laughs> Especially probably from a teen um, point of view, right. So do you think the book is um, familiar? Does it have that kind of familiarity that you're kind of describing about music? Does the book 
mirror that as well? It is a very, it is a relatable kind of text. They do, uh, the main characters both don't make it on the bas baseball team that they were trying out for. Um, they go to like Starbucks, he gets his first car. There's a lot of stuff that is that would be relatable to a teenager yeah oh, okay well that's i think that's great in itself um is there a particular scene from the book that you remember well the scene would be a bit of a spoiler to okay. the reader so i can't answer that question no problem. no problem. But if you read it, you know what scene, you know. <laughs> okay. Um, so on a scale of one to ten, where would you rate the book? I would give it a solid, a solid eight. Um, it's interesting. And the poem and verse kind of stuff makes you, it doesn't, it doesn't make the book feel too long because you will randomly might have a chapter that's just like 10 words that are like all alliteration or something. It, it is an interesting text and I personally enjoy it. So. Oh, okay. So it sounds like a good text that, um, again, because, you know, school is right around the corner and if teachers are still looking for texts to incorporate into their curriculum, sounds like a textbook that an English teacher could easily, or a music teacher could think about, um, presenting pieces each day for maybe students to respond to as a bell ringer or uh, recite because they are in verse. Um, how would you feel about any of those activities? Uh, I feel like a literature teacher could use it pretty well to describe different types of poetry. Um, and a music teacher could use it to uh, give different types of jazz music. They also talk about other poem writers and artists of different types, not just jazz. For example? Uh, they also talk about like people like Langston Hughes in the book and Bob Marley. So, yeah. Can't go wrong there. Okay. Well, thank you again for being our guest, and we look forward to probably speaking with you in the near future. Remember to subscribe, like, and share Talking About Books. Um, you can find us on YouTube under Wonder Boy, and we hope to see you soon. Take care.